Due to the overwhelming support and success of my foundation video, Discover the Horse You Never Knew, there's been an incredible demand for follow-up videos to help people deal with the many issues we all face on a regular basis. So we've addressed a variety of these issues to help you continue your quest in understanding and communicating with these wonderful creatures. Bear in mind that in almost every instance, the first six steps of my seven-step system have already been worked by me or one of my apprentices or students. Therefore, by the time we've addressed many of these issues, it's just not a big deal because the trust and confidence instilled earlier has helped the horse immeasurably. I have a willing partner who happily accepts my directorship. It's absolutely critical that you fully understand and are working the seven-step system before attempting to deal with this or any of the problems addressed in my videos. Otherwise, you just won't get it. If you don't completely understand this program, you're jumping into the middle and probably won't be successful. Listen to your horses. Don't move any faster than your horse tells you to. Leave her watching the car. Be observant. If your horse is in pain physically or mentally, how well can he perform? Allow your horses to be horses and run wild and free on a regular basis. Don't allow your horses to become prisoners cooped up in a little stall. Do what your horse wants to do from time to time. Most importantly, treat your horses the way you like to be treated. You won't believe how well you'll get along. I salute you to committing to excellence in the lifelong process of learning. Be patient with yourself and patient with your horses. got a three-year-old Arabian, Arabian filly here that's never been ridden before that I'm going to do a colt starting on. And uh, for her benefit, I'm going to, going to try to introduce her to the fly spray because it'll probably be a little bit easier, the whole process, if she, uh, if she can deal with the spray. And I'll kind of help her with that, come in and make friends with her. And when I haul her, I'll offer the hauler and hope she puts her nose in just like that. That's a good sign. That means she's had some good handling and likes people and kind of likes to work. I kind of want to make friends with her before I do anything. I want to bond with her. That's the first step in my program. So I'll bring her over here and kind of love on her and rub her eyes a little bit and get inside the corner of her mouth. And Maybe inside her nose. What a girl. What a girl. Kind of ask her to come in here and get a little, get a little lovey with me, just like that. She's got her head completely around. Now I'll go around the other way. You see, and ask for it. Again, after we bind, we get give and take. She's coming right in there. All right, I'll run my fingers underneath her tail. Put my fingers in her nose, her mouth. What a girl. What a girl. And underneath the tail at the same time, that's intimacy. She's had some nice handling, obviously. See if she can drop that head, release, release, release. So I've already worked the first three steps with this horse. <laughs> She's doing real well. So I'll go ahead and see if I can get the spray on her now. The way I like to start spraying is start making that noise. Make that noise a little bit. And Oh, that started to bother her, so I've got to get in here and stroke her neck as I do this. What a good girl. Kind of help her with it. I don't know. My hands on her neck are the best thing I have. So I kind of keep, keep stroking her neck. What a good girl. Stroking her neck. Kind of helping her through it. I wouldn't just go after her with it. I wouldn't go after her when I, when I uh, wash a horse. It'd be the same kind of thing. I wouldn't want to just suddenly you know, ask her to do ballet and bring the front across. There it is. Now, it's important that you have the foundation video before you think about, about starting a horse. You need to understand the, all the basics of getting along with the horse and bonding and, and take and give and have the first six steps going really well before you'd think about asking a horse to accept the saddle. She's doing real well with that. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. But if I'd have just gone after her with it, it might have been an issue. If, if you have a horse that has a real problem with fly spray, 
fill your bottle with water and start way out here, just getting them used to it, stroking their neck while you're getting them used to it. You're not even touching the horse. Then you get in closer and closer and get the horse's head to drop and get in their mouth and, and just kind of work with them until they can handle it. And you'd start kind of uh, spraying them sort of in the, the rump area and maybe up in here where they can, where it's just not such a big deal. Try to find a place that's not a big deal and then, and then build from there. But I'll go ahead and put this, put this fly spray away and we'll get started. I've gone, already gone ahead and, and bonded with her. I've got take and give working really well and we've actually gotten intimate. You see, in other words, she comes right in here with me. Okay, I'll get back here and stroke her flanks, get underneath the tail. This is what I call intimacy. There's a lot of trust going on here. I'll actually cover that outside eye so she can't, can't even look out. I'll come over here and get it on the other side. What a girl. See, she's had good handling, a lot of trust, a lot of good trust. There it is. Now I'll ask her hindquarters to step over. I'll just kind of bump a little bit. Right in this area here, about where my stirrup's going to hang. And I'll ask those hindquarters to step over. I want to see that hind leg step in front, inside hind step in front. So she's doing real well. So I'll start what I call the dance. The dance begins. I'll go ahead and run this around behind her. She's going to unwind. And when she does, I'll go ahead and drive her. My left hand is the accelerator. I need her to move out. I don't want her in on top of me. Okay. So I'll drive with this hand, and this hand keeps her where I want her. My left hand drives, my right hand keeps her in position. And as we're doing this, I'll kind of drift into some things that I think might bother her, which is the next step, which is desensitizing. I deliberately want to find things that could bother the horse and help her with it. Good girl. Because the saddling part of it and me getting in the saddle is, can be pretty traumatic. So I want to find little things here that could bother her and help her with it now, build that trust. Now I'll ask her to go out the other way. Send her around. Now my right hand's the accelerator. It keeps her going. I don't keep waving my hand, otherwise she'll get dull to it. Okay? And again, I'll kind of check this out, make sure that's not a big deal. I'm going to come in here and I'll go ahead and I'm going to toss the rope up over her back. Let her carry that. It's all part of desensitizing. Let her carry that around a little bit. But I'm going to wind her down. I'm going to take her back to this safe, loving place that we've created on the ground. Right in here, we're going to do one rain stop on the ground, take her back to the safety zone. Right in there. She comes in, gets soft. And then I'll release. And she did it beautifully. Come around the other way. Now she's going to have to think this out. You know, you need to go the other way. I know. She says, well, I can't figure that out. So I kind of help her with it. I'll kind of drive with this hand. There she is. Comes out the other side. So I'll go ahead and send her off a little bit. Toss the rope up over her back. Help desensitize her. Wind her down. Get her stopped. She's going to give me her head. I'm going to stroke these flanks. She gives me her head, gets soft, and I'll, I'll release and reward. She's doing real well. You'd almost think I had a lot of time working with this horse, but I don't. I did trailer load her, so I get to know her just a little bit. But she's never had a saddle on. Now I'm going to teach her a few other things. We're going to drift into this desensitizing because I want to try to find anything that might bother her, this kind of thing. Now, if this was really bothersome to the horse, I'd start way out here where it wasn't bothersome, and I'd get in a little closer. I'd get a hand on her. You can handle that. I'm no, no big deal. You can handle that. You get up here, stroke her eyes. And the rope will get longer and longer until it'll be up over her head. That's what I'm after for her to be able to handle that. It's no big deal. I keep stroking that neck. The best two, tool, two tools I have are these, these hands right here on the horse's neck. Okay? So again, I'll kind of try to find some things that bother her deliberately. I'll, I'll, I'll look for things. Okay, she's going around. I'll do some stuff like that. Up over her ears. Up. Again. You can handle that. No, she's handling it just fine. This is real good for the horse because 
she's learning to tolerate this over her head, and then she's learning to move away from pressure as she comes in here and starts the dance. What a good girl. We'll try the other side now. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Well, doesn't get a whole lot better. Okay. So again, I'll run, run around here and see if she can unwind. Oh, you're going to have to go the other way. And there she goes. Beautiful. Just unwinds like she's done it her whole life. Now I'm going to do a little plastic bag therapy here. I've got a plastic bag on the end of a, an aerial. I'm just trying to help her deal with life. You know, there's a lot of plastic in our world. Get out here and kind of let her see it a little bit. Let her sniff it. Easy, girl. I know. What is that? Oh, my God. That's big stuff. That's pretty bothersome. Well, if that's real bothersome, I imagine that a saddle might be just a little, almost more than she can handle. So I'll go ahead and send her off, and I'll let her carry it. I'll see if she can just carry it around and not have it be a real big deal. It might be. might be more than she can handle if that's the case. Easy, girl. Easy, girl. There. There. Now she's handling it. That's a girl. You see, it just took a little bit. That's a girl. So I'll just let her carry it. I'm not going to ask a lot. Just say, hey, you can do this. You see? Just let her carry it and talk to her and let her know she's doing a good job on the right side. And as she starts getting comfortable with it, then I'll turn the heat up just a little bit and make it just a little more difficult for her. I don't want to have her flip out. I don't want to send her over the top, but I want her to, I want her to understand that there's going to be some things going on in the next little bit that, that might be a little bit... What a good girl. Might be a little difficult to handle, and I want to establish a level of trust and confidence, mutual level of trust and confidence in each other. Get her out here in the middle again. She handled that real right, real well on the right side. So I'll get here, and after I've worked the horse's sides, then I want to get out in front, and I want to make sure that this isn't a big deal. She doesn't have to, and usually doesn't have to flip out. Usually there's a place in there eyesight where they're pretty bothered and she's kind of telling me she's got some issues it's all right i know i know and the way i can help her with this again is just get in here and stroke, <laughs> stroke her neck easy you can handle that i know i know yeah stay out here yeah you're all right i know i know there's a real quick way to get this fixed where it doesn't take any energy by the human, and that is you just tie these things around where they live, above their feeder and above their water. There it is on the left side. Not such a big deal. <laughs> but this is just one way to desensitize her. You know, there's, a, there's, no, there's no end to what you can do. Easy girl, easy girl, there. Just kind of help with it. That's a girl. Yeah. There she's going to work her mouth. You kind of hit the, hit the plastic with, the, with her tail. I'll get in there and help her work her mouth, see? Because that mouth's a little tight. I'll just go right in there and kind of, kind of feather that tongue a little bit, and she'll start to get relaxed and work that mouth. That's a sign of understanding and relaxation. What a girl. What a girl. She's a stout little thing. Hadn't missed too many meals, doesn't look to me like. Let her carry it around her, on her back leg there. It's no big deal. You can do that. You can deal with that. That way, if she has any trouble being shod, that'll help her a whole lot. What a good girl. And keep stroking. I don't know. Maybe ask that head to come back down while I'm, while I'm desensitizing with the bag, so I'm helping her get relaxed. Well, and then I'll get a little more aggressive. I'll come in up here. I don't have to get it perfect, but what I need to do is I need to see retention. I need to see her getting better all the time. And whenever she gets bothered, I've got to go in and help her, you see. When she really has trouble, then I've got to come in and say, hey, let me show you how you can handle this. I've got to kind of love her through it. I've got to nurture her a little bit. That's a girl. See, I want her to look, look to me when she's bothered. Easy, girl. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Doing real well with that. 
get pretty aggressive with it. She doesn't have to freak out. Come out in front again. Handling that a whole lot better. Beautiful. She's just coming along great. Doesn't get a whole lot better, huh? No. She says, but wait a minute, you're back on the right side. Huh. Well, you can handle that on the right side. I don't know. So I'll get in here and I'll kind of kind of get her. Yeah. Stroke her a little bit. Bring the bag in. No big deal. Let her carry it. What a good girl. But I want her to come right down and be able to walk and handle it and go slow. That's the trick. I want her to go slow. <laughs> The question was, how do I know when to saddle the horse? When is it time to saddle the horse after doing the, 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 the first three steps? Well, you, you've got to do your desensitizing, see? That's the next thing. You've got to get the desensitizing going really well. You know, if this is going to bother the horse a whole lot, I don't want to get on. So I've got to get this kind of thing fixed before I even think about it. Okay? So she's in a pretty good place. I'll go ahead and, and uh, we'll move in the direction of saddling pretty quick here, I think. I'm going to go ahead and ask her to do a little ballet since that's the next step. Send her off, tilt her head, and send her off the other way. I want her to get pretty smooth at doing this. This is what I call ballet on the ground. She does a turn on the forehand and a turn on the haunches. She's learning how to use herself, becoming an athlete. And I want her to stay out of my way. There it is. She has to kind of back up a little bit. She'll start working her mouth. Her head will come down. OK, one more time. Block this side. Send her off the other way. Real easy for her from, from right to left. She's not quite as accurate from left to right. Now kind of make a mental note of that. There it is, beautiful. Just did that beautiful. So she's in a pretty good place. I'll go on over. and We got the first six steps working pretty well. I'll go on over here. and. See how she can handle the blanket. Now the blanket is a great indicator. It's a great tool to find out where your horse is. I'll let her sniff it a little bit. Oh my God, it's a blanket. It's a horse blanket. Oh, oh, it's so scary. So I'll go ahead and kind of rub it on her a little bit. Start in here. And kind of work my way back if I can. I know, I know, easy girl. If I can get it on her neck and shoulder, that's a girl. And I can get a hand on her at the same time. You see, and over here. Yeah, then I'll kind of work it back. Let her move off a little bit. What a girl. See, and I don't care if she moves around a little bit. That's fine. I think the place people get in a lot of trouble with their horses is they expect them to stand still while you do all this stuff. Get them all bridled up and, and do everything before they get on. Have, the, have everything done. And the horse in reality is saying, I need a little help. Now she needs a little help on the right side. So I'll go in here and offer it. Not no. Rub it on her nose. It smells just like horses. I don't mind having a little horse sweat on there because that smells familiar. You're something else. You're a good girl. And I'll keep kind of loving on her and hoping that she'll kind of get in here with me and sniff it. That's a girl. That's what I needed. That's it. She needs to move off a little bit. I'll kind of keep rubbing on her. Keep stroking with my right hand. What a girl. And I'll get a little more aggressive all the time with it, you see? A little more aggressive. That's a girl. A little more aggressive. Do a little ballet. I'll go ahead and open this up to where it's a little bigger. I'd like her to be working her mouth a little bit as a sign of understanding. And since I don't see it, I'll get in here and I'll kind of help her get right in the corner of her mouth. Yeah, and rub her eye a little bit, get inside her nose, ask her to drop her head. That's good. I'll let her carry that blanket now. And this one shouldn't be quite as, quite as big a deal, but you never know. You can't take anything for granted. Red might be, red might be a problem. I'll go ahead and let her sniff it. No, nobody's going to hurt a girl. Yeah, I'll get on here and 
touch your shoulder with it. Get this all straightened out the way I need it. You see, since I took the time originally, the red blanket shouldn't be, shouldn't be a big deal. But I don't care how long it takes. She's got to get, if she can't handle this, if she's having trouble with the blanket, then we're going to have problems. And I might even do a little more desensitizing by kind of, just kind of, just kind of bumping the saddle a little bit here. And if she wants to move off, that's okay. No big deal. She's kind of saying to me, hey, let's put the saddle on. So I'll go ahead and get the saddle ready. When a horse is being ridden for the first time, it's always a good idea to make it as easy as possible for him, for the horse, by getting all the stuff on the offside up and out of the way. Okay. And again, I'm just going to kind of let her sniff it. Oh my God, it's a saddle. It's all right, I know. She, she, hopefully she's starting to trust me a little bit and knows that I'm not going to get her in any any serious trouble. Do a little more desensitizing in here. What a good girl, I know. I know, and just kind of kind of ease it on, ease it on her back if I can, and hang on to it. I don't want her to lose it. So I'll kind of keep, keep stroking her. And I'd like to get that saddle a little bit more where I need it before we But I like the horse to just kind of walk along with it, carry the weight, hear things banging a little bit, a little bit of noise. She's a little roly-poly. I have a feeling it's going to be interesting keeping a saddle on this horse. She doesn't have any withers. I seem to be been getting a string of these lately. That That's a girl. That's a girl. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've got to start with it up front, nice and far forward. Easy girl. Come over on the other side and get that stirrup down so she can get used to that a little bit. Keep stroking. Keep a handle on it because I don't want to I don't want to lose it. Well, that's a good girl. That's an awful good girl. Yes it is. Now it's time to bring the bring the stirrup. Bring the uh, bring the cinch down. I'm going to carry that a little bit. I know. She's just fine. Yeah. A good girl. No big jumps. The idea behind this system is that you try to set it up so the horse can be a winner. We can both be a winner. But if I suddenly go from, from step one to step eight, or from A to, a to H, Quite likely the horse could have some problems. Now desensitize those that flank area a little bit. Reach in here, make sure I'm about in the middle. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. And I'll kind of pull up on that girth a little bit and just let her feel that. A fair bit. I've got probably oh 20, 30 pounds I'm pulling up with. That I'd like her to feel, kind of get used to. If she needs to move off, that's fine, but I'm going to kind of hold it in here. I didn't want to do it real sudden. i just like her to understand. And we're about ready to lose it, so glad I caught that. Easy, girl. Easy, girl. Stroke, stroke, stroke. I'm going to go ahead and hang that stirrup because it'll, it'll help balance the saddle a little bit. Yeah, I'll get in here again. It's never a bad idea to use your left hand when you're, when you're doing that because you can keep an eye on that back foot if the horse does have a big issue. It's a little easier to keep an eye on that back, that back leg. Now, cinch this up, but I don't want to get it too tight. I just want to get it on there where it's just kind of snug, about like that. All right, and I'm going to leave that latigo. What a good girl, watching that back. Keep this real loose. I don't want this real tight on her because that's going to send her off. And what I want to do now is just kind of walk her around a little bit. What a good girl and keep kind of reassuring her. It's like this is fun. This is a fun game. I'm going to keep close eye on that saddle because I sure don't want it to, to get underneath her. And I've got a 
I've got a pretty good handle here. That's a girl. I'll go ahead and take up another notch. I do this with all horses. I never cinch them up and just say good luck. In other words, I cinch them up in three or four segments. Always, always two, never less than two, usually three, three cinchings. That's a girl, I know. Now it's on there a little tighter. So she could, she could kind of lose it here any time. But I'll kind of help her with it. Kind of keep stroking and hoping she can handle it on her own. Go back to the dance and just have her going along. Maybe, maybe slap the saddle because that would, that would tell me if she's really bothered. I like slapping the saddle. Every time I put a saddle on, I, I drive the horse off. I get him used to that. What a good girl. I keep kind of stroking and letting her know everything's fine. I know. I know. Yeah, she is working her mouth on her own, a little more desensitizing. Good girl. And she's handling that real well. I'll go ahead and send her off the other way. Ballet on the ground, get the get the hindquarters and then the front quarters. Learn how to do ballet. And a little bit of this. Stroke her on the side here. Just kind of let her know everything's all right. It's just part of life. That's a girl. There, she went up to a trot and came back down. That's real good. I'll check it out over here and see if I can kind of, not aggressively at all. I don't want to be aggressive. I'm just helping her tolerate more and more all the time. Just saying, you know, just like that plastic. What a good girl. What a good girl. Let her know. Yeah. Why aren't you some? You going to work that mouth for me? Huh? Yeah. Just love on her. Let her know she's doing it well. Doesn't get any better. I know. I know. Shh. And now it's time to go ahead and get another notch in here. Don't need a rubbing on me, so she'll kind of bump into my palm of my hand here. She's doing great. I'll go ahead and get another notch or two here. It doesn't need to be tight. That back cinch, I don't like to see them tight. That's pretty good. That's in there good. That's actually fairly, fairly snug. Yeah, you're doing good. Needs to move off, that's just fine. Start to agitate in here again. Get her to try it out a little bit. I want to see her go up and do her transitions. I'd like to see her move from a walk up to a trot. Just like that. With her ears forward and her tail nice and soft. Handling it just fine. That's a good girl. Send her off the other way. kind of saying go forward but I'm also saying tolerate see she'd like to block me out on that right side I'm saying tolerate this because guess what life could get a little more interesting here in the near future but she's doing a great job I'll go ahead and stop her see if she can handle that again not a big deal not a big deal and again and again boy aren't you something pretty proud of herself that's how you fix ears. Yeah, I know, I know, love on her. She likes that eye thing. Oh God, rub my eyes. Somebody rub my eyes. You notice that I've changed my clothes. I wouldn't get on a horse the first time without long pants. I do ride with shorts a lot in summertime because I want to be cool. It's about 90 degrees out here today. I've also put on a helmet. So I just, big proponent of safety. That's my middle name. So I want to stack the cards in my favor. And if something was ever to happen, I want to be as as well protected as I can possibly be. I never start a horse with a bit in their mouth. I always use a, a rope hauler with a 12 foot lead. Get, try to give the horse the best deal possible. And these haulers and lead ropes are available through our company, Dances with Horses. I always ride the horse five or six times with a hauler and lead rope before I go to a bit. And it would be a mild snaffle bit. I like to put the bit in their mouth with the head stall and no reins and let them live with that a little bit, maybe even let them eat. 
get used to it. And then I'll put the reins on and it'll all make sense. Pretty good girl. She, uh, so I'll just come bring her out here and we'll do a, we'll do a few, uh, a few more maneuvers. Pretty good, got pretty aggressive with it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wind her down. Do a one rein stop on the ground, make sure that head's coming around real nice. Getting stopped. Kind of stroke her in the flank area here, help her with it. Eventually she's gonna get stopped, she's gonna give me her head and then she's gonna get relief right there. Beautiful. Now I'll send her around the other way. All right, you're gonna have to go this way. Kind of help her with it, drive her around a little bit. Send her off the other way. Do a little more desensitizing. And get, get fairly aggressive with it. Okay, wind her down. Again, do a one rein stop on the ground, her head comes around. I've gotta have that head come around because that's, that's what's gonna keep me safe. Make sure this kind of thing isn't gonna bother her. She's kind of starting a little bit, so I wanna help her with that. I know, you're all right. Come back and kind of reassure her by dropping her head, getting in the corner of her mouth, rubbing her eye and her ear, kind of loving on her. It's like, hey, you can handle that. Even get her head in here and show her what it's all about. No big deal. No big deal, you can handle that. And I'm getting more and more aggressive all the time with her. Because if a little thing's gonna send her off, what's gonna happen when I get in the saddle? I'm gonna go ahead and cinch her up pretty good now because I'm coming close to the moment of truth here. I've got another, this is pretty tight. That's the way it's gonna have to be because her withers are so unsubstantial. I always move a horse off regardless of the horse's age once I've cinched him up a little bit, especially when I've gotten that much, pulled that much. I just got three holes. Good girl. And the other way. Ask her to do a little ballet, change sides. See you, Rot. Good girl. That's pretty good. Doesn't seem to want to lower her head and freak out. Handling all that really well. So she's more or less saying to me, come on, let's go for a ride. Now go ahead and get her around here where you can see real well. Get her stopped. And I'll have a little feel of mane and rein on the left side. Put a little weight in the stirrup. Up, stroke. Now I've just got my toe in the stirrup, so if she does flip out, I can get off pretty quick. But I'm just delighted. I'm kind of stroking around the opposite side, desensitizing a little bit, making sure that's not a big deal. She's in there checking me out, which I like a lot. Now we'll go ahead and do the right side. This does not get a whole lot better so far. I'm pretty, I'm real impressed. <laughs> to say the least, it can give you a lot more difficult. There are times when it's a lot more difficult, but this is the procedure I use with every single horse, every single time. And if she wants to walk around a little bit, that's fine, because that's just gonna allow me to do a one rein stop and get her head in there. So again, I'll desensitize that offside a little bit, get off, and she's basically saying to me, come on, get on. I think the signals are pretty clear. They are to me. That's not to say I can't get in trouble, but the point is I've got her head coming around with very little energy. So go ahead and get on. What a girl. What a girl. A lot of stroking. A lot of stroking. Let her know that everything's just fine. And I'll ask that head to come in here again on this side. Kind of reassure. Now I'm up, up above you. I'm in the saddle. But it's the same deal. It's the same deal, see? I need that head to come around. What a girl. I keep stroking that neck, she's working her mouth. I want that head to come all the way in, there it is. Now we'll just bring the front across. That was ballet on the ground, ballet in the saddle. We'll go for a ride. A lot of stroking. Okay, again. What a girl. Just with a little encouragement, I want her to move out. And when she does, I'll quit asking. And try to ride her with life, keep my body going. Let her know that everything's just fine. That's a girl. Yes, she needs to move out, and this is just great. It doesn't get any prettier than this. And I want to.
want to kick her. I just want to, I just want to agitate a little bit to get her to go, you see. There it is. Now quit the second I get it. Okay. I'll go ahead and ask her to go around to the right here. I really got my body working, saying to her we're going somewhere. We don't need to go fast, but we need forward movement. What a good girl. And I'll go ahead and do a one rein stop on the right side. I'll disengage these hind quarters, bring them over, wait here till she gets stopped on the right and gets completely soft. And I can help her by kind of stroking on the right side. I'll get in here and stroke her flanks a little bit. You're going to make it. She'll go around a little bit, a few times. But eventually she's going to get stopped. She's going to give me her head. Good girl. Like I said, head to come around. Then I'll bring the front across to the right. Just kind of open the right side up, bump a little bit, and she walks right out of it. That's what I call ballet in the saddle. Okay, left side, I'll do a one rein stop on the left. Guide this head around, disengage those hind quarters. She steps over, hang on until she gets stopped completely and gives me her head. Kind of pull, pull to my, to the point of my pelvis here. Wait till she gets stopped completely, open the left side up, move my weight back, and ask the front quarters to come across to the left. There she just did ballet in the saddle. I got a riding horse here now. And she just wanted to trot a little bit. That's great. Hey, we got a real horse here. Kind of help her with it. If she wants to move, that's okay. But she's going to have to respect my legs. I don't want to get anything started that, that could build into something bad. There it is. What a girl. I'll just kind of up the ante a little bit and do a little bit of this on our first ride. Hopefully she'll never have an issue with people doing things with ropes and it shouldn't be a big deal. Might even shake the gate a little bit. She's just walking out beautifully. It just couldn't get any better really. But I'm really, I'm kind of working. I'm kind of, I'm kind of riding her with life. I want her to I don't want to just sit up here. I want her to know when we're going somewhere, I'm going. I'm there riding her, so my whole body's kind of working. I'll do a one rein stop to the right. Bump those hind quarters over with my right leg. Bump, 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 bump. I feel her step over. My weight's forward just a little bit. Because she's, she's, I want her to do a turn, a turn on the forehand. Easy girl. She's going to make it here. Just kind of set it up. The more I stroke, the quicker she'll find it. But I need that, need that head to get soft, you see. I need to come right in there, just like that. Now open the right side up and close the left. I'm just bumping a little bit, and she walks right out of it. But she's, a, she's just done great. I'm, I couldn't be happier. Handling this just fine, understanding direction. Doesn't take much at all. To, Get her to go and tell her where I want to go. Open the right side up. Moves right up to a trot without too much energy. Open the left side up. That's, that's a good first ride for her. I'll go ahead and wind her down. Get her stopped. Might even just plant the seed for, plant the seed for backing now. See if she could even just understand a little bit that if there's backward pressure here. Release. Good. What a good girl. I might even be able to might even be able to kind of get her stopped this way. You never know. She walks into pressure and understands it. But it's never a bad idea to have them disengage those hind quarters. Have them understanding that first ride that ooh. Ooh, release, release, back, and go forward. I want her to understand that when my body says go forward, we're going forward. My body's forward, we go forward. When the life comes out of my body, then, then we stop. My weight goes back a little bit, we're probably gonna, gonna back. So I'll disengage those hind quarters a little bit. 
A little more. Wait till she gets stopped. I'm going to do a little hurdy gurdy in the saddle. This is my signal to the horse that I'm going to get off. This is my signal. It says, I'm getting ready to get off. Are you ready? Main and rain on the left side. I'm off. I'm going to come up here and tell her what a wonderful job she did. It's not always this easy, but it is most of the time. 90% of the time for me, it's, it's this easy unless somebody's, somebody's messed it up. Somebody's gotten bucked off or something on that first ride, first couple of rides. Then lots of times I have something to fix up. But, but generally, if you use this system, this uh, seven step system, the horses are pretty much ready and they invite me to get on. And it'll work for you too if you pay attention to it and really work the system. We're gonna talk now a little bit about what happens after that first ride, next week, the next month. Now, I'd ride the horse for three or four days, three or four times, with a hauler and a lead rope, just as I start all of them. And then I go to a real mild snaffle bit. You wanna put the snaffle bit on so it's not too tight and yet definitely not too loose. You don't want the horse to get the tongue over the bit. So I like a couple wrinkles to start. Later on, I'd move the bit down just a little bit. And I like to put the bit on without any rain so the horse can get used to that. Maybe even let them eat their hay for a while with the bit. And then I go to putting reins on and teach the horse to pull the head one way, pull the head the other way, the bit starts to mean something. Okay, I'd ride three or four days, maybe even as long as a week in the round pen, depending on the horse. And the horse will tell you just where they are. And then I graduate to a bigger area, maybe an arena, a fenced in arena. And I'd go out and I'd be working these steps. I'd be doing ballet on the ground, ballet in the saddle. Get real good at it. Don't sneak rides. Push your horses a little bit. Be able to shake gates and slap your hand and, 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 and do things. Once a horse is doing reasonably well in the arena, then I'd find a seasoned horse, an older horse, and go out on a trail ride and do things. Be active. Stop, get off, let the horse graze a little bit, maybe cross some water, do some ditches, some hills. Challenge the horse. The horse will never get good. You'll never build the horse's confidence up unless you go out and challenge the horse and challenge yourself. The most important thing is that you and the horse are enjoying your time together, that you really have a true partnership. And it can be a wonderful, wonderful experience for both of you. Take your time. Again, be patient with yourself and patient with your horses. You're gonna have this friend probably for a long time. Thank you.